Hello everyone, welcome to part 5. Now let's move to question number 81. Isometric contraction to promote stability is used in Option A, Rhythmic Initiation Option B, Rhythmic Stabilization Option C, Repeated Contraction Option D, Radiation And the answer is Option B, Rhythmic Stabilization Now let's move to question number 82. Facilitation of agonist results in Simultaneous inhibition of antagonist Option A. Reciprocal inhibition Option B. Autogenic inhibition Option C. Irradiation Option D. Successive induction And the answer is Option A. Reciprocal inhibition Now let's move to question number 83 Overflow or energy is channeled from stronger to weaker muscle is Option A. Irradiation Option B. Reciprocal inhibition Option C. Successive induction Option D all of the above and the answer is Option A irradiation. Now let's move to question number 84. Smooth changes of direction can be seen in Option A slow reversal, Option B alternative isometrics, Option C contract relax, Option D rhythmic stabilization and the answer is Option A slow reversal. Now let's move to question number 85. Proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation was originally used for Option A. Poliomyelitis Option B. Golden Baron Syndrome Option C. Stroke Option D. Cerebral Ataxia And the answer is Option A. Poliomyelitis Now let's move to question number 86 Hip hiking gait deviation is due to the weakness of Option A. Weak hip abductors Option B. Hip flexors Option C. Weak hip extensor option d all of the above and the answer is option b hip weak flexors in some textbooks it's weak hip abductors now let's move to question number 87 little nudge in the beginning of the movement are used in option a rhythmic initiation option b rhythmic stabilization option c agonistic reversal option d slow reversal and the answer is Option A. Rhythmic Initiation Now let's move to question number 88. Trunderberg K deviation is mainly due to Option A. Weak hip abductors Option B. Weak hip flexors Option C. Weak hip extensors Option D. All of the above And the answer is Option A. Weak hip abductors Now let's move to question number 89. K deviation named Crossed gait deviation is seen in Option A. Hip flexion contracture Option B. Knee flexion contracture Option C. Increased lumbar load hosis Option D. All of the above And the answer is Option D. All of the above Now let's move to question number 90 The PNF technique that is used to catch up with the lagging part is called Option A. Timing for emphasis Option B. GTO stimulation Option C. Rhythmic Stabilization Option D. Rhythmic Initiation And the answer is Option A. Timing for Emphysis Now let's move to question number 91 Round fat type of body High levels of fat around hips and thighs Pear shape is termed as Option A. Endomorphic body Option B. Mesomorphic body Option C. Endomorphic body Option D. Somatotype and the answer is Option A. Endomorphic body Now let's move to question number 92 Gay deviation in form of toe down instead of heel strike can be seen due to Option A. Plantar flexor spasticity Option B. Plantar flexor contracture Option C. Limb length discriminancy Option D. All of the above And the answer is Option D. All of the above now let's move to question number 93. The gait deviation in form of equinus gait deviation is due to Option A. Weak dorsiflexor Option B. Limb length discriminancy Option C. Plantar flexor contraction Option D. All of the above And the answer is Option D. All of the above Now let's move to question number 94. Flexed forward trunk bending gait deviation is seen in patients with Option A, V quadriceps. Option B, paralysis of quadriceps. Option C, both of the above. Option D, none of the above. And the answer is Option C, both of the above. 
Now let's move to question number 95. Genu recurvatum with extension thrust gait deviation. Option A, cords paralysis. Option B, hamstring weakness. Option C, plantar flexion contracture. Option D, all of the above. And the answer is Option D, all of the above. Now let's move to question number 96. Gait deviation in form of lateral trunk bending can be due to Option A, weak hip abductors. Option B, weak hip flexors. Option C, weak hip extensors. Option D, all of the above. And the answer is Option A, weak hip abductors. Now let's move to question number 97. Anterior pelvic tilt is produced by dash. Option A, hip extensors, abdominals. Option B, hip flexors, lumbar extensors. Option C, hip adductors and trunk side flexors. Option D, none of the above. And the answer is Option B, hip flexors and lumbar extensors. Now let's move to question number 98. Gait deviation in terms of exaggerated knee flexion at terminal stands is due to Option A, knee flexion contracture. Option B, hip flexion contracture. Option C, both of above. Option D, none of above. And the answer is Option C, both of above. Now let's move to question number 99. Gait deviation in form of hyperextension of knee at stands can be due to Option A, V coriceps. Option B, plantar flexion contracture. Option C, both of above. Option D, none of above. And the answer is Option C, both of above. Now let's move to question number 100. Gait deviation in form of absence of toe off is due to Option A, weak toe flexors. Option B, weak plantar flexors. Option C, forefoot pain. Option D, all of the above. And the answer is Option D, all of the above. So that's all for today. If you have any doubts, please do mention in the comment box. Explanation to each and every question is given in the description box and detailed explanations are our telegram channel. See you in the next video that will be posted next week. Wait till then. Bye bye. Thank you.